All right, welcome back to another 10 Minute Tuesday, and we have Chris Paddock from the Minnesota Twins here with us today. Chris also runs and an outfitter, Mad Duck Outfitters. And Mad Duck Outfitters yeah. didn't let me get there, so I know. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> but anyway, what we wanted to ask Chris about today is something I'm going to let Joey prepare for us. So it wasn't we, it was me. There you go. Um, so you said you really uh, started waterfowling in 2015. Yep. Right, and now we're almost into 2025. You want to ask me about extensions? Yeah, dude. I'm going to ask you about your hair extensions. <laughs> um, no, I just... The I'm only always, extension you know about? <laughs> I'm always interested, because you're almost at the decade mark of waterfowling, and it's really interesting, especially coming from Texas, hearing everybody's perspective on what do you feel like when you started waterfowling was the most important when you started, right? Whether it was calling your hide decoys, decoys, you know, whatever your camouflage gear. versus now 10 years in and you own an outfitter. Like what is the big difference from when you started to now? And because so many people ask us, I feel like questions that I learned when I was 10, right? you know, but I have to remember, okay, you didn't grow up the same way that I did. You're not even the same part of the country as I right. am, you know? So I think it'd be really great to hear your opinion on that. Yeah, I think, you know, I always grew up a hunter, but I never got into the waterfowl aspect of things. So it's it's a, it was a completely different, like, learning curve for me because I normally, you know, in Texas we can hunt, you know, we can set up feeders and, you know, you open up a beer and the deer just come walking <laughs> in. You don't have much work to do. You right. know, you're just checking game cameras, seeing Damn, what's thank coming. Thank you for in. being honest. Yeah, you know, checking cameras, seeing what time they're coming or whatever. But in 2015 – you know, roughly about nine, ten years ago, my buddy took me on my first guided hunt, you know, in Arkansas. And we show up to the lodge, and there's a poker table and, you know, a bunch of old farts, you know, drinking beer around the campfire, you know, having the, you know, just a bunch of guys that just love sharing their story or, or have Guys them being dudes. Yeah, you know, just guys being dudes. And the next morning, we're waking up at four, and everything's set up. We show up to the blind, you know, 30 minutes before shooting light. And everything's set up. Dogs are in position. Guides and their hands are already out there. The, the spread's already set up. And we're hunting a little flooded rice field. And I'm like, what? Like, we, why do we wake up so early if it's already done? Right. You know, and it, it just, it was eye-opening because I didn't expect that. I expected to wake up. Work you know, for it. Work for it. Um, and I knew that we were on a guided hunt. So, you know, at the end of the day, 18, 19 year old kid, I knew that there was going to be, you know, hospitality involved. I just didn't know what to expect. Yeah. Um, and I would say at the time, you know, I was the shy caller that to this day, I'm still shy. If, if I was to go hunting with you guys, I would leave my lanyard in the truck because I'm just like, <laughs> don't call me out and try and freaking do a greeting call. And hey, Paddock, you got, you know, you finished this group. I, I'm just shy. I'm, I'm not scared. I'm just like, confidence wasn't there especially at that age I didn't I just got into it um so I thought calling was the number one like if you can't call you might as well not even show up yeah but nine years down the road and I'm still learning to this day I've, I've only been on a couple hunts since then but I started an outfitter because I've just obsessed with it and I want to learn and I want to you know educate myself and and be like you guys you know well, bring it to more people right yeah and to kids. I would say answering that now is scouting. Is I think scouting is the number one tool of finding the birds, figuring out where the roost is, you know, where, like how, how many, 200, 1,000, 10,000, you know, because we hunt lessers in Texas, so that they're, they're just Varies. always in a group. Yep. Um, early season or not, you know, they're just, they're just a packed house is – Scouting and, you know, your hide, I would say, are the two biggest things that I've learned over the last nine years. And I'm still learning, you know, thanks to my partner, Logan, of, of teaching me a lot of stuff last year. I would say, yeah, nine years is a lot of time, but last year was whenever I sat down and I really was like, I want to educate myself. I well, here, here's the thing, too. You think nine years is a long time, right? right? But at the same time depending on what flyway you're in, you only have 60 days right. in those nine years. Right. So it's 60 times nine. Right. So what is that? 540. 540 days of hunting. 
Right. It doesn't sound like a whole lot. And the know? other 270, I'm playing baseball. Right. So yeah. it's <laughs> right. You know, oh, yeah, so you're eight up for time, right. dude. You know, so I, yeah, when you say nine years on this podcast, it feels like, oh, Paddock oh, should know, right. you know, X, Y, and Z. It's but a long time. I've, I've, I think that was a great answer. Yeah, Scouting trying, and hide, like, yeah. I would. No, yeah, I'm not saying anything like that. All I'm right. just reminding myself even, like, you only have 60 days right. in each year. Right. So it's just over a full year of hunting, right. which is crazy to think about. It's, yeah, it's not anything, a year, it's 60 days. Right, when you, you know, take right, a guy so. who's been hunting for 20 years, if they were only hunting in their home state, you're still only talking about 1,200 days. That's right. That's only four. That's only I've, three years. I've literally never thought about that until right now. It's right. crazy. That's freaking Which is, nuts. You know, it it is crazy to think about. Um, you have a short window to learn a lot. Right, right. But I would season. say last year, yeah, you know, twenty twenty two and twenty three hunting season, yeah, was or I guess it would have been twenty three twenty four hunting season, yeah, is when I really sat down with Logan because we started this outfitter. We had a vision for Mad Duck, what you know, what we wanted to do and bring to the table and separate ourselves is I was like, act like I'm a beginner, man. Teach me the ins and outs. I want to learn how to properly flodge a blind. I want to learn how to freaking, you know, feed or chuckle. I want to, I want to learn everything. And that is probably the biggest difference that, yeah, being a badass caller, competition, or having a buddy that can freaking absolutely rip it is awesome. But if he doesn't want to grind – and go scout or doesn't want to help flodge blinds or get up at four and have coffee made and you know you're you're out there with the boys just having a good time it doesn't do you any good because I feel like there's so much more this is why it's relatable to baseball is there's so much more behind the scenes that people you don't just have a six-man limit or a 12-man limit every hunt you know there's there's failed hunts to where you learn and you write down like what did we do wrong you're trying to find that answer and that's what gets you up the next morning that's what makes you obsessed with this sport is how can we be better as, as and you'll as, never stop yeah. doing it and yeah. right when you think you have it figured out mother nature says no nah, i'm not coming out today y'all y'all <laughs> right. just sit out there and freeze your balls off yeah, and you right, lunch you lined. Know, but then you get stories, you know, you get to share those memories with your boys in the blinds. And, and those are the stories like you were talking about, you know, on the long podcast of, of the pictures on the wall, you know, each picture has a story and very rarely did you bring up when you limited out. It was, you know, that's, that's, what's cool about it is over the last nine years is what I've learned is I thought Colin was the most important, which I'm not to where I want to be by any means. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would say your hide and scouting are your top two. And us being an outfitter, hopefully having some clients come in in the next couple of years when we get everything, you know, lined out on our end is the hospitality of things that you can control is, is you know, the stories, the relationships, the personalities, you know, just being a good human being around people that are paying you to, you know, have you put them on birds or never been hunting before ever. You know, there's there's just so much more that goes with it um, than just loading your guns and, and pulling the trigger. Yep. Dude, I've been, we have been hunting all over the United States, you know, and the times that, I mean, I'm going to speak for myself. There's been a lot of places that I've gone where you have to like really rough it. You're going to kill birds. But then after the hunt, you're like by yourself. And it's like, eh, you know, right. it's like, eh. You know, and our, our buddy Bobby Guy, he does a really good job yeah. of this. You know, he's a huge YouTube personality, and he is so cool. He's, like, one of my favorite people that I've met in the waterfowl industry. And he really spends time with his clients. Right. You know, it's not like, hey, man, thanks for paying me your money. Right. I got to leave. You know, here's your lodge. Here's where you're staying, you know. And I've been to so many places where it's, like, not ragtag. Like, they really know how to kill birds, you know. But then they have families or they have another business that they have to go to and whatever, which I totally understand. But it's, like, if I'm going for an experience, I'm not going to go to that place. If I want to just murder birds, If you're going to bring five of your boys and you're going to get an Airbnb and you don't need to see those people after your hunt, great. But a lot of the time when you're going to, like, Texas and you're from Minnesota or something, yeah, or, like, when you're you're going going Bobby Guys, bro, like... Sandhill Flyway, everything about it is it feels like you're at home, dude. Like you show up and everyone's like so he nice. Wants you to have a good yeah, time. Yeah, they hang out. Everything's beautiful, man. Like it's just it's fun, right? What's what's cool too 
is going off a boat, like what y'all both said there is the reality is I know people are going to look us up or want to come hunting because I'm there. Right. So I, I want to be, I want to remember where I came from is not be too cool for school or big league people. You know, yeah, I have family. I have hobbies that I also like doing besides hunting and baseball that, that takes up my time. But if people are paying me and, and depending on me to show up and, and sign a baseball or, or just be present and, and share my story and just talk about life, you know, that is something that I love doing and that I think that we'll be able to bring to the table at Mad Duck is like talking sports, talking life, but, you know, I'm kind of a celebrity in a way, and I know that. It's like there's kids, there's dads, there's you have families. To represent. Yeah, as I want that reputation for myself because when someone depends on you, I want to be there. You know, I want to have yep. I want to be that answer. And yep. and I think that that's easier said than done, you know, when it's around the holidays or I haven't been home in a week and, you know, whatever the case might be is I'm single. So I have that time now. So when I'm not Take single is, is yeah. finding someone who understands my baseball lifestyle and also, you know, how obsessed and passionate I am about starting an outfitter and, and what those days look like. Because when my season ends, I only have 70 days of waterfowl season to work my butt off and, and grind out content and, and capture those moments or when we have, when we start our, you know, when we open Starting our books clients. is that's going to be more than just weekends. Yeah. And people are going to be expecting X, Y, and Z. And we want to bring that to the table. Well, so. and what Bobby does too, man, which, you know, for you, like he doesn't, it's not like he always has to be like, you know, amped up and like, you know, the, right. the entertainment, he's just real. Right. He's just real and honest and authentic and like, yeah, you know what? That kind of sucked today. Let's go out there and try again tomorrow or whatever it is. And like just being able to like relate to somebody who you saw and you idolized or you looked at and you were like, man, I hope I can make it to the league or I hope I can, you know, have duck calling sponsorships and do what Bobby's doing someday. Like right. to sit down with that guy and have him be like, oh, yeah, man, it just didn't work today. It's too bad. Like, let's have a crawfish boil and have fun and right. let's go try again tomorrow. Like him being like just his normal person, you know, like that's what people are going to want from you. Right. When, so. And uh, we just had our goose opener here in Minnesota and I had been planning to go out to Wisconsin with my buddy and I'm working a huge job right now. So I told him when he invited me, I was like, that's perfect. I have zero time to scout. I have to be an hour from my house at 7 a.m. So I can't scout in the morning and it's like 12 to 14 hour days. So I can't scout when I'm done with work. And I'm like, that's perfect. And then they had something happen on opener to where he's like, but I'm so sorry, you can't come. It's like, shit. And that was on Friday that he told me that. So I'm like, okay. So I made a plan to go and find some feeds and I found a lot of birds and it was great. But every single person that I knocked on already had someone hunting on it. And, you know, I'm, I'm asking the day before opener. Right. So like naturally you can expect that. And I've put a lot of work into my calling and all this other stuff. But if you don't have the right place where the birds are, and if you don't have a good hide, it doesn't matter how good of a caller you are. Right. You know, so scouting and your hide are two of the most important things possible. Right. Now, I still got out on an opener and killed four birds in a field that has never had birds in it. And that was fun. And that was because of calling, you know. But it was just like, that's what truly matters is being where the birds want to be or around the birds and then making sure that they have no idea that you're there. Right. right. And I, I think going off of that too is, you know, if whether you're young, you're old, you're just getting into it, you have 10 years of experience, go knock on a door. You know, don't, I feel like that, that's one thing in our Especially sport with young dudes now, man. It's like, they're, they're afraid like, Farmer Joe is it's intimidating. Dude. Yeah, it's gonna come out with a shotgun and you know get you yeah. off the property. He might tell you no. Yeah, the worst thing that they can say is no. Or they could say fuck you. They could say they do say fuck you. They do say fuck you. But that's we, fine, dude. We Leave haven't there. experienced Whatever. that yet. You know, we're, we're very fortunate to build come a relationship. Hunt a little longer right. around here. <laughs> but <laughs> but it's I feel like that might be one of the biggest fears in this sport or yeah. in this industry is not knocking on doors or, you know, I, I don't want to go alone. You know, you, you get a group and we'll go ask together of like, Hey, you know, just be yourselves, you know, shake, shake a farmer's hand and, and tell them who you are. And Hey, we were scouting and we saw birds and, you know, 
Can we pay you $50 a gun? You know, whatever it is. Can we get you a bottle of whiskey? You know, can we get you some outlaw beer? There you whatever, go. Whatever it is, that's, I think that that's something that people have to get over. Because well, 10 no's is worth that one yes. Honestly, man, the other thing, too, before we wrap this is, like, if you're a younger dude and you can present yourself in a respectful way, you have 10 times better chance of getting permission than I do. It's just a reality. Because you're not respectful. I'm very disrespectful. <laughs> and, no, it's that, it's that like, they look at a dude my age and they're like, you probably have other spots. But, like, a 15-year-old kid right. who shows up and is like, or a 16-year-old kid who just got his license... Yes, sir. My name is this shaking hands and being respectful and looking somebody in the eye and asking for permission. If you get permission and you go out there and you clean up, you probably be the only person that ever gets to hunt it for the rest of your life. Because, you know, those farmers, for the most part, they don't have Instagram. So you can't just DM right. them. You know, <laughs> no. you can't. You like can't your just, girlfriends, Chris. <laughs> you can't just DM <laughs> them and, and expect an answer. If they don't answer, you're just on to the next. Like you have to go have some manners. Yeah. You know, don't, you know, never forget where you came from. Shake a farmer's hand. Look him in the and, eye. And yes, ma'am. No, sir. You know, be polite. Yeah. And, and kind of go from there. I think that that's a cool, cool way of like getting out of that fear is you got to go do it. Yeah. You, have to, you got to go f- get your feet on the ground and knock on those doors and yeah. and get permission because 10 no's is, is worth the one yes. For sure. With your buddies, for sure. Yeah. Yep. I was I was lucky enough to get plunged into the construction industry. And so my job, how I made money was knocking on doors for to make people spend money. Right. You know. <laughs> so you're you're a good sales rep. You got used to it fast. Rejection is you got you used, to, used rejection. to rejection right. fast. Because you'll you'll knock a hundred yeah. doors in a day and you'll get fifteen maybes. <laughs> you'll get two yeses and it's like, holy shit, I just And a hundred no's. I just made four grand today from those two yeses. Right. That's fucking awesome. And so you just like plow through the no's. Same thing with women. It's like, no, 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 sounds good. They're like Mm, like, Maybe. cool <laughs> you know yeah it's the 100%. same thing no you just gotta be yourself be respectful get permission and be fine with rejection mm-hmm. and that'll do it for this 10 minute tuesday chris thanks for coming man we'll have you back on we'll see you guys soon all righty thanks guys